Isn't Hey You Guys the one that goes, Hey You Guys? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, I know it, mate. I know that one. <laughs> Um, I love the show. Well, what I've only what I've seen of it. Oh, episode cool. one. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Very good. I mean, it's great. Your character's got great character development in this. I just wondered, did you get all the scripts in one go, or do they come kind of periodically? And how is it quite nerve wracking waiting for the next script to see kind of like what they're going to do with your character and where they're going to take him? I got the first five um, in like one sitting uh, after I got offered the part, and then I read them all in like one night, basically. But well, it's hard to speak without sort of giving any spoilers, but the second half of the show, Kristen Cole is like a very different, it's like a slightly different thing that happens. No, no spoilers there. Um, so yeah, it is, um, you're kind of like uh, adjusting as you go along, yeah, definitely. So I always wonder if you see the writers on set and sort of go over, tell them, oh, your hair looks really nice today. Stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of like, yeah, a lot of that. A lot of like, hey, good to see you. What a beautiful day outside. Tell me everything about the show that I need to know. So I'm just interested about how you sort of crafted your character. Were the books a bible for you, or did you did you use Game of Thrones, the sort of series, as, as, a, as a means to kind of help just understand the world and the kind of tonality of, of what you're entering into? Um, I didn't use the books. Uh, I used the, our book. I didn't use the other books. I used like Fire and Blood, obviously. Um, which was very much, you know, like, I mean, I don't know if you've read any of it, but it's sort of written like, um, it's not written from a from a narrative st standpoint. It's written much more from like a factual. This is what happened, and it, it's, it doesn't give you a lot on character. But in terms of the series, I went back and watched a bit of like um, Oberon Martel's like Pedro Pascal stuff because he is Dornish, and I basically like panicked the day before we started filming that I didn't really have a good character, and so I just watched him for inspiration. Not that my performance is like touching the surface of his, but yeah. I was wondering, is it quite weird having sort of so many sort of pre-established opinions on the character and world already? Like you mentioned your character's Dornish, but if you go online, there's people t talking about Dornish people and what they think of the kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I just wondered, it's, it must be quite strange sort of entering into something that's sort of quite new. And already there's this kind of whole world out there and people with their kind of opinions about how it is and what it should be like. It kind of feels like you're making a, like a piece of like non-fiction. Mm -hmm. that, that's kind of what I felt like. I felt like um, it's like it was in the real world type thing. Because um, like yeah, there are like videos on there's like a video on YouTube of like characters from the original Game of Thrones talking about Dornish characters and how they spoke about them. Um, so yeah, it's a bit weird in that sense, definitely. And since the sort of birth of Game of Thrones, the sets, the props, the names have become so iconic. I mean, the words like King's Landing and stuff. When you hear it in this, it's like oh god. I just wondered, you know, like is when you walked onto onto the set and you were sort of entered into this world, did it feel a bit like you were walking into like a theme park in some way? Yeah, I mean, you sort of see like the sets and everything. Yeah, it felt like you're going into like what um, a make believe world of what Game of Thrones looks like. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah, the whole time. It didn't. That didn't subside until the end of the show. I'd say. Did you ever get to sit on the Iron Throne? I did. Yeah. I did. I did. I, did <laughs> sit, I sat on it, and I'm not gonna. Someone took a picture of it and has it, and I now have it, which is like a really illegal thing, I think, and probably like I'm, I might get fired, but I have got a photo of me sat on the Iron Throne. In my armour. Nice. Yeah, and quite controversial, I think, maybe. If not, if not fired by HBO, then at least by, um, by Paddy Considine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because I heard, yeah, have you heard this? Paddy yeah. said he's not letting anyone sit on the yeah. throne. He wasn't there when I sat on it. Uh, I wouldn't have yeah. risked it, yeah. So I was wondering, too, because it's such a big role, this, for you. So I just wonder when you sort of look back to when Game of Thrones began and how it made such huge stars out of its kind of young cast. Is it quite a... When you take on a role like this, is there a sort of element of quite being quite a daunting prospect? Because in your profession, fame is inadvertently kind of coincides with success. So is that something you've ever thought or prepared for when you get involved in something like this, that this could be... This could increase the amount of people asking for autographs and kind of going to fan conventions and kind of dealing with that whole side of, of the industry? I think... To some extent, it's um, impossible not to think about it, um, certainly at the beginning, but before you started. But I think that once you're making the show, you're just making the show and you're just treating every day like you would anything. You know, like, I want to do a good job and I hope this scene goes well and I, like, I hope I don't look ridiculous in this armour. Um, whereas, yeah, and then I think now as it's getting closer, maybe you start thinking about it again, but I don't know, I, I just feel like we, we're trying to make as good a show as we can, and like, if the show is great and people like it, and then that's kind of the main takeaway, I think. Do you remember where you were when you first found out you got the part, and who was yeah. the first person you told? Yeah, my mum. <laughs> yeah, I was, in my, uh, I was in my kitchen, and I, Miguel and Ryan told me over Zoom, it was like in the heights of COVID, so Zoom was all the rage, and... Um, yeah, and Ryan, and then I, yeah, I like, remember like I leant over uh, my 
in my uh, dining like my dining room table, and I felt like I was gonna faint. And then um, I called my mum, and she thought I was. She was like, "You've got it wrong. It's impossible. That's not happening." So. Um, yeah. So do you have plans for like the first night, the launch night? To, to I'm not even here. I'm oh. in Paris. We're, so we're doing a screening in Paris mm. um, on the 22nd, and my mum's French, so, I, so they've sent me out as like the French ambassador for the show. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'll be in Paris for it. And I promise you, I'm not sitting here just trying to get you sacked. But I was just wondering, did you get to take anything? And I don't mean steal, but just like a lot of people from sort of Game of Thrones, they get to keep a little souvenir of a memento. Do you know what's experience. weird is like I keep hearing from everyone that different things like it's been being sort of like treacled down the cast that people are taking stuff from set. I didn't take one thing the whole time I was filming, except for on a for Halloween, I had like a white kind of looked like a pirate shirt, and I wore it for Halloween. And then um, and then the panic that ensued on set because I'd taken this white shirt. And then I heard that Paddy and Matt have like swords in their houses. And so I feel I've been hard done by. Try and get Next year, I'm going to steal some stuff. Get the Iron Throne, try and get that on yeah, the bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get 15 men in to try and steal the Iron Throne. So my very final question, I just wonder how happy you are to finally be sharing this with the world. I guess more than anything else, have it when it's sort of aired, you can actually talk to people about it because it is on the shows, it's so entrenched in secrecy. It's almost quite hard. You, I guess you want to talk about this show and speak to your friends and your family, but you have to wait for it to, to have aired. Are you sort of just looking forward to it finally being out there, ready for people to, to, to watch and discuss? Yeah, well, I, I think that what's so nice is that it, I think like long, the long gone are the days where shows c came out weekly and I think it's so nice that we get to be one of those shows that sort of comes out over a 10 week period. And so there's like a feeling of, anti I'm not gonna, I just found out, Eleanor who's right there told me that our, um, that, we get, that we've been sent the first five episodes to watch, uh, but I'm not gonna watch them because I just wanna see them as they come out to be honest. Yeah, um, I can't wait to watch yeah. all of it. Thank you so much yeah, for Thank you so yeah, so nice to meet you. Cheers, yeah, all the best. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey you guys.